Yeah, Liberty, you guys rock. Thanks, guys. Thanks for bringing it to, to the, making this possible for us to help our learners in South Africa. It's been a very difficult time, but you know what? South Africans are able to accomplish anything they set their minds to, and I know you can do it. All right, so next question's from Eloquent. Eloquent, you are a little angel. Here we go. Here we've got the ear, okay, and we have the brain which is part of the central nervous system. Remember, your central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord, all right? Your peripheral nervous system are all your senses, okay? Your arms, your legs, your skin, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, or everything that's around the central nervous system. And your autonomic nervous system is the one that works automatically. You don't have to think about it. Okay, so it's your hormones, etc. Okay, so first thing you do is label. So A is the eustachian tube. And the eustachian tube's job is to equalize pressure between, from the throat, because that's why you go to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. They're all linked in the throat. So your eustachian tube is there to make sure that the air inside the middle ear and your outer ear okay, here, and you've got your auditory canal there, that that pressure is the same. Otherwise, those little icicles, the little bones inside the middle ear, are not going to vibrate properly to amplify sound. And then you won't be able to hear. So that eustachian tube is very important. Okay, then B, those are your semi -cir circular canals, okay? little hyphen there. So your semicircular canals, they're at right angles. And what makes them very special is they tell your, your, your cerebellum and your brain, okay, where your head is in relation to your body when you are traveling as far as speed and change in direction of your head are concerned. So for example, a dancer would have to have really awesome semicircular canals so that she can figure out or he can figure out how they're moving. It's when you change speed and direction of your head. Okay. Then C is your cerebrum, and that is all your higher intelligence. <clears throat> and perception of your senses and movement, etc. All of that is here. That is your corpus callosum. Remember it like this. The corpus callosum keeps the left and the right hemispheres of the brain together. Okay. It keeps them callose. The corpus callosum. Then E is the cerebellum. <clears throat> That's for balance and equilibrium. And then that is your medulla oblongata. And the medulla oblongata regulates all your reflex actions. So peristalsis, it regulates your heartbeat, your breathing rate, and it gives all its information, and it is regulated also by the hypothalamus. And then you have G, which is going to be your master gland, which is your pituitary gland. And so it's right here in the middle. So if you take a, um, a knitting needle and you stick it through your temples, you take another knitting needle down the center of your brain here, you'll get where they cross. That's where your, where your pituitary is. But your pituitary is called the master gland, but the pituitary is regulated by the hypothalamus, which sits just above the pituitary over there. Okay, now let's look at this. So, write down the letter of the part of the brain, or the ear, that controls breathing. Well, it's the medulla. Oh, I mean, why am I writing medulla oblongata? You see, doff, doff, doff. I must, you don't do that in an exam, please, guys. Okay, be careful about that. So, the letter, it's going to be F. Okay, and it's the breathing it's your breathing rate and your heartbeat rate because they work together. All right, and then balance is air pressure between the outer and the middle ear. It's going to be A, it's the eustachian tube. Give one function of the parts labeled B, the part labeled B, although the semicircular canals will be balance. Um, but it's also and equilibrium. 
okay? And then C is going to be, where is C? C is the cerebrum. Now, people, please, you must learn the functions of the different parts of the brain. Okay, so your cerebrum, let's just write this out here. Cerebrum, you must know that it receives... Uh, receives and interprets um, all impulses from the sensory organs. Okay, that's number one. It's your center for higher intelligence. Okay, and it controls all voluntary movements. Okay, it's not reflex. If you think about it, so I want to pick up the pen. I want to talk to you. I am moving. Okay, it's voluntary, not involuntary. Involuntary stuff is all done by the central nervous system, by the spinal cord, okay? So, and the, and the hypothalamus. So, the, you must know this. It receives and interprets those impulses from your sensory um, organs. It is the center for higher intelligence. Think about it. When, you, when you're battling to remember something, what do you do? You put your fingers here and go, what was that answer again? What? Ah! We all do that because this is your higher intelligence. It's right here in the front of your head, and then controls all voluntary movements. Alrighty, now, so I have given you the answer there. Okay, any of those functions. Then, name the endocrine gland found at the base of the brain, labeled G, that is the pituitary gland. Name the hormone that this endocrine gland secretes, okay, which changes the empty graphene follicle to a yellow mass. That is going to be, come on guys, it is your luteinizing hormone. And while we're here, let me quickly do this. Okay, you have um, your follicle stimulating hormone, which comes from the pituitary. Okay, so the pituitary gland secretes follicle stimulating hormone. That goes to the ovary. And it causes the ovary to, uh, um, for the graphene or the follicle, to develop. And remember, inside that follicle, what are you going to have? You've got the little ovum. It's sitting there inside that little follicle. That follicle then develops and develops and develops, and as it develops, it develops into the graphene follicle. That contains the ovum. As it develops, this follicle is now going to release oestero. So estrogen is, co is called, where the FSH is released by the pituitary, estrogen is an ovarian hormone. Why? Because it's released inside the ovary in by the graphene follicle. Okay, now what happens is this increase of, of estrogen stimulates the pituitary and the pituitary then releases luteinizing hormone. And what does luteinizing hormone do? Well, it then causes ovulation, okay? Which is when the graphene follicle releases the little ovum, so it can be fertilized, and it goes into the fallopian tubes, where it waits for a little sperm cell. Okay, so luteinizing hormone from the pituitary causes ovulation. Okay, and it also, plus the development of the graphene follicle into the corpus luteum. Now look, luteinizing hormone, corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum is this yellow mass that they talk about here, okay? And what is the corpus? Now remember, this corpus luteum is in the ovary. So what does it do? 
the corpus luteum now releases progesterone. And progesterone is also known as an ovarian hormone. And you know what? Progesterone inhibits the pituitary. It says, no, 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 Mr. Pituitary, you can't release any uh, uh, um, follicle-stimulating hormone until we know that fertilization hasn't occurred, okay? So the high amounts of follicle-stimulating hormone by the corpus luteum lets the pituitary know, please don't release any follicle-stimulating hormone. It inhibits it. So that's why no extra follicles are released. And you know when you're pregnant, then your, the, the pituitary... Uh, the pituitary, the, the, uh, um, the, the corpus luteum produces lots of progesterone until the, the placenta is completely formed for, at about three weeks. So, I mean, three months, so about 12 weeks. The, the, the placenta is completely formed and then it starts to produce the progesterone. But until then, that corpus luteum produces progesterone. Why? Because it has to stop the pituitary from releasing follicle-stimulating hormone. Otherwise, you'll be one month pregnant, two months pregnant, three months pregnant, four months pregnant, five months pregnant. I mean, can you imagine? No, 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 no. We, one pregnancy is enough. So you, you get pregnant, it runs for nine months, you give birth, and then we can start the whole process again. So that is why we have progesterone released by the ovary. It's an ovarian hormone. And then when fertilization, when there is no fertilization, your progesterone level will decrease. It goes down. So it decreases. Why? Because the corpus luteum is no longer needed. And as the corpus luteum starts to shrink, it produces less and less progesterone, which means the pituitary is no longer inhibited and the pituitary releases follicle-stimulating hormone and the whole 28-day process starts again with menstruation on day one and the whole build-up after that. Okay, so that, how much time have we got? Yoff, we've got very little time. Okay, so that's the end of that question.